what's good y'all it's boy ross back at again with another video so we're back here with another my thoughts and opinions for wrestlemania night one i'm not sure if you can tell my voice is a little bit uh hoarse right now um from just turning up from last night with you guys live on stream and uh you know we also turned up for the homie's birthday shout out to dub it today is actually his birthday um so you know after the stream we definitely turned up even more that's why the video um is you know dropping a little bit later than it normally would because i haven't really had enough time to post it and but um you know i'm, I'm up up right now you know trying to get this video out for you guys because we got a lot to talk about man to night one was a damn good show man damn good show so let's get right into it man gonna get my thoughts and opinions on the entire card and what i rank uh what was the best match for me and what i rank night one on a scale of one to ten so we're gonna start with the united states championship match between john cena versus austin theory now we did catch the match towards you know like the midway like well like towards the beginning and into the midway um because we were trying to set things up i did see austin theory was doing a lot to you know channel his inner mike tyson he was he bit john cena's earlobe at one point like he was doing everything like dirty tactics to get get ahead and not to say there wasn't a bad match um i just thought the match itself for the opener with john cena in it for the united states championship it felt a little lackluster especially towards the end they went the went with the the traditional the ref get bumped then the heel hits the the, the baby face with the low blow and then ends up hitting the uh the baby face with his finishing move while the ref is knocked out and then ref all of a sudden comes to counts the the pinfall victory now the old john cena before you saw the bald spot and before he decided to wrestle in some custom air forces shout out to you john would have kicked out at two and a half because super cena was always ready for some cheating shenanigans and somehow would win but this is a new john and i figured they were going to put him over the right person one in theory is just i didn't like how it was done it, it just came off so like anticlimactic so it, it came off like a monday night raw ending to a match overall it was an okay match um it wasn't the best way to start the show um a lot of you guys just felt like the ending just didn't hit it didn't reach that point in the match where you're like man this is a great way to start off the show and it doesn't really help theory's case i guess you can say because even though he got put over i don't know if fans are still you know still buying into his this win and his you know united states championship title run so i don't know we'll see how things progress going forward but the match was serviceable it wasn't bad i just felt like uh for this to be the opening of of, of wrestlemania could have been a whole lot better so the next match is Braun Strowman and Ricochet versus Street Profits versus Alpha Academy versus the Viking Raiders, the men's showcase. This should have opened up the show. I figured this match would be fun. I didn't know how good it was going to be. Bro, this should have opened up the show because they showed out. Everyone got a, uh, had a chance to showcase their skills. A highlight for me is Chad Gable dead like from a deadlift suplex he deadlifted suplex Braun Strowman I didn't know the dude was that strong Chad Gable is that guy and it does look like they're starting to try to push him as that singles mid-card competitor so it'll be very interesting to see where they go with him going forward looks like they may end up breaking Alpha Academy but the dude was fantastic bro fantastic love the spots of ricochet selling ricochet's interaction with montez ford was great the viking raiders had a nice moment this was this should have started the show because the crowd was white hot with this like the match started and then it just it went to 11 very quickly i love love this match if you have a chance go watch it i wish this was add some stipulation like oh maybe whoever wins this gets a number one uh, contender title shot at the tag team titles because this they deserved it this was great but 
um, Street Profits end up winning, and they had a nice WrestleMania moment. Uh, and so, once again, shout out to Ricochet, just selling like a champion this entire match. This was fun. This should have started off WrestleMania Night 1. Felt so good. Another great match right after that. Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul. I don't know what Seth be thinking when it comes to his wardrobes, but I will say this. He's confident in himself. <laughs> I, you know, it's it's a little, little on the zest side, but you can't deny the dude when, it, when he gets in that ring, he knows how to put on a show. And Logan Paul recreating the WrestleMania entrance with HBK coming from the Raptors. That was such a cool moment. Like, bro, that was, shout out to him not having no fear being up there. Like, it was anything could happen. Gladly, nothing did. You know, him promoting his drinking, then having the mascot, you know what I'm saying, come out there, the prime mascot. Like, this, this, was, this was fun. And they, Logan showed you why you may not like him. The motherfucker can go. <laughs> the dude is just great in the ring he has this ring of presence he knows what he's doing like he he i've never really noticed how fluid and how natural it felt for him to be in that ring as much as i did yesterday with someone as of, of a caliber as seth rollins who's gonna put on a good show it, it was fantastic him hitting the gts was <laughs> crazy you know what i'm saying a little nod to see him punk there also his buckshot lariat looks very good like he was showing the stops and i love the fact that you know what i'm saying they made it seem as if he actually had a chance and he belonged there and then of course the integration with having ksi as the prime drink mascot that was at ringside was hilarious i thought that was so cool like just to see these guys that are that are you know at one point you know they were primarily just youtubers like what i'm doing they're at wrestlemania in a marquee match having the time of their lives and of course logan going to the top as as seth is laying on the table you know it looks like seth about to get hit with a beautiful uh frog splash from the top of the rope um all the way to the uh the announce table but Rollins moves out the way just in time and uh KSI ends up eating a frog splash in the suit going through the table great great beautiful spot you know this match was fun this was a very 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 fun match I don't know what to tell you you may not like Logan but he every match he has had he has knocked it out the park any opponent he's knocked it out the park with in this one more or less the same great match fun match definitely go uh watch it if you haven't seen it already now this is kind of a low point of the show unfortunately it's always going to be a low point becky lynch Lita, and trish stratus versus damage damage control i wasn't really invested in this match going in and when i watched it i i think the only silver lining for me personally that i can take is cool seeing Lita and it's cool seeing trish out there doing the things they were doing and in the incredible shape that they are in. They still look good out there <laughs> putting on the show in WrestleMania. That that was probably the nostalgia cool part of it. Honestly, you know, there were some cool spots here and there. But for me, I can't take damage control seriously because it's like they just lost the titles not too long ago. I can't even take them seriously. I don't know what they're doing with them. But honestly, I, I, I they got to figure out something. They, they, they have to figure out something. I don't know. I, I I really I really don't know what they're gonna do with them. This match was the low point. It wasn't awful, but I feel like this is like a, another classic of this could have been on a Monday Night Raw. Could have you know gave this to a Monday Night Raw. It, it it did not have that WrestleMania feel and the simple fact that they were just coming off a match with Seth Rollins and Logan Paul that was up here. It was gonna be kind of hard for them to actually match that. So. For me personally, lowest point of the uh, of the show for me, but it wasn't bad. It's not something I'm gonna go back and watch again. So if you missed it, you didn't really miss it. Now this match, this was this is what you call long-term booking at its finest. Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio. 
this was just fun. This was the story was there. And you see recently in WWE, if the story's there, the fans are going to buy into it. The story's been there. People have been wanting to see Dominic get get the beats. People have been wanting to see Dominic get, get taken care of. The fact that Rey Mysterio at one point took off his belt and started whooping him was a highlight of the show for me, man. This was so fun. Dominic looked actually pretty good out there. He felt a little bit more comfortable, in my opinion. Granted, he's working with his dad. I love the things he was doing. We got to talk about hell. Rey Mysterio's entrance was fantastic coming out in the low rider, you know, you know, to the lie, uh, cheat and steal, you know, theme, rest in peace, Eddie, the Viva La Raza. This was so, that was such a cool entrance. One of my favorite entrances of the night. Dominic coming out there in like this squad car, this squad vehicle. Like he was like the old school cane that had to come out with the multiple guards. Uh, to the ring with um, with handcuffs. I thought that was a nice little touch. Like, oh, he's such a badass now. The disrespect to his family at ringside by Dominic. Dominic throwing a drink at his sister's face. His mom finally slapping him in the face. And then, of course, Judgment Day get involved. But Ray ends up having some help out there to help him with those. You know what I'm saying? The newly crowned individuals that are part of the Latin world order. It was cool to see that, that little run in. And Bad Bunny was on commentary. Now, you're, you know, you're trying to figure out what's going on here. Well, Dominic is about to use some chains that uh, Damian Priest left in his jacket. But that's when Bad Bunny goes from commentary, goes to the ring, says, nope, take the chains from him. Like, you're not doing that. And that's how Ray was able to get the victory, get the pin off him, hit the 619, went to the top rope, got the pin off of him. And I think, uh, I believe Black Clashes, uh, let me Google this right now because I, I don't want to not know exactly where Backlash is going to be at this year. Hold on, WWE Backlash 2023. I'm doing this live. Where is it going to be located at? Okay, I thought so. It's going to be in Puerto Rico and Bad Bunny is going to be there. So I think they're going to do something with Bad Bunny and Dominic Mysterio. I think that's going to be a thing going forward because obviously he got involved here. Did not think Dominic was going to lose, but hey, I'm okay with Ray winning. This was a fantastic, fun match. Go watch it. Story is chef's kiss. Fantastic. All right. Now, the match that, oh, bro, they, they, man, man, they knocked this out the park. After following the Ray Mysterio and Dominic match, you got to ask, how can the SmackDown Women's Championship follow that? Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. I don't even know what to say. This match started off slow. It started off slow. The crowd was kind of a little exhausted. They were kind of sitting on their hands. They were oohing off for certain things, but it started off slow. They had a little bit of some sloppy moments, but it just, at one point, they started turning it up. Shout out to Charlotte, bro. I got to give her respect. She... She showed out. She made Rhea look really good. And there were some parts that made me cringe. The first part that was just like, okay, Charlotte's really, you know, taking some beats here is Charlotte's at the top rope. Rhea goes and she essentially just suplex her off the top rope, except she doesn't fall down. She just throws her away, throw away, throw away, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, kind of like a throwaway toss. And she lands from the top rope, flips onto her face, just just a hard landing and then at some point it kind of happened again except she didn't fully rotate so her neck she like she landed on her head and her neck kind of you know hyper extended oh my when i say that looks so brutal and you can like she landed on her face essentially and you know you can see the bruising on her nose but this was a hard fought battle there were some moments where i'm thinking Oh, Charlotte has it, and then she kicks out. And there's some moments where Rhea, she hits a riptide in the ring. And I'm like, all right, it's over. And she kicked out, and I'm like, oh, my God. And you can tell the crowd was pro Rhea here. Everyone wanted Rhea to win. I wanted Rhea to win, and she's the heel. And that was fantastic. It, it took her going to the top rope, hitting the riptide. Well, it was like the second to top rope. 
hitting the riptide there. Such a beautiful move from that high elevation to get the win. And at that moment, she didn't seem like a heel. She seemed like a pure baby face. I don't know what they do with her because the fans are into it. And they made the right decision. Charlotte put her over. You, you, it felt like a double turn here because Charlotte was definitely getting a little spicy, a little disrespectful. So you think it would probably have been a double turn. But overall, this was great. That was, oh, uh, the match started off. I'm not going to lie. It starts off so slow considering what match was before. But it just, that was a very, very good women's championship match. It could have been a main eventer for sure. But we all knew what the main event had to be for the night. And the main event. Well, they actually added an extra mat, pat, uh, match. Patch, mat, pat McAfee versus The Miz. That was an impromptu match. It was cool to see Pat out there. Um, honestly, I didn't think this match needed to be on the card because it kind of, you know, overbloated the show. But it was cool. Nice little funny moments there. So, um, Pat McAfee getting the win. So, that was a cool one. But the match that we all wanted to see. The Undisputed Tag Team Championships. The Usos versus Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. What am I to say, bro? One of the best tag team matches I've seen in so long. Maybe one of the best tag team matches all year for some. And I couldn't argue with it. This match was great. I want y'all to understand, for those who was part of the live stream, if you know Sir Dance a lot, he's been in a few of our videos. He hasn't really watched wrestling like that. He doesn't. He knows about it, but he... You know certain people, but he doesn't watch wrestling like that. Sir Dance a lot was there because Dub at the time was, you know, talking to guests. He was there from the beginning of that match all the way to the end. He was hooked. He doesn't know nothing about the UC bloodline storyline. He was hooked to the point where he may want to show up again tonight to watch night two. That's how captivating this match was. You didn't even have to know about it, but you knew it was something special. It started off slow, methodical, and then their get, their end goal was to isolate and conquer. Sammy was catching the beats, bro. I'm talking about Sammy selling this. He's getting tag team with multiple kicks because you can see that Jimmy and Jay they know this. This is nothing new to them. So they are working. There's hidden tags here and there. You didn't know. You know, they were on or they were on their game. I like the fact that nobody else in the bloodline got involved. It was just about these four men. And I don't even know what to tell you. There was a moment in this match multiple times where it looks like Kevin Owens was done. Where it looks like Sami Zayn was done. Like the, there was a a, a spot like a power bomb spot. Kevin Owens just got obliterated. Kev now Sami Zayn is by himself, and he's doing the ultimate underdog move. He kicked out of the one D. No one does that. I, I believe my girls and no one had ever kicked out. He kicked out by himself. Kicked out, and he's laying on the rope saying no. Jay is giving him the big. Jay hits him with his a uh, haluva kick. He's talking trash to him. He's barely has anything left. And he's fighting. He, oh my God. This was great. This was fantastic. I love the ending sequence where they're, they're, Jay is lined up in the corner and the crowd's going so insane. Sammy's charged up, got that dog in him, hits him with three, I believe, Haluva kicks. Last, I mean, Jay is barely held it up, holding up. And he's looking at him the same way that he was just looking at him not too long ago in that match. It was beautiful. And we have new undisputed WWE Tag Team Champs. Best match of the night, in my opinion. This was fantastic. This ended perfectly how it should have. I don't even know what to say. This was great. If you haven't seen this match, go watch it. Do yourself some... Do yourself a favor. Take 20 to 30 minutes out your time, out your day. Watch it. Fantastic. I, I don't really even have nothing else to say. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. And that was night one. 
Night one is going to be very tough for night two to can top this, but night two can, depending on how things play out. But night one sold me. Triple H knocked it out the park here. Outside of the lackluster finish, uh, lackluster finish uh, on the first match with Austin Theory and John Cena, and that women's match, every match on this card, I don't really, I ain't really care too much about the Miz and Pat McAfee, but I don't really count that. Every match on this card was fantastic. Eight and up on a scale of one to ten. If I had to rate night one on a scale of one to ten, I'm giving this a nine out of ten. A nine out of ten. This was fan damn. Fantastic. That main event alone is so goddamn good. I give this a nine and a half out of ten, honestly. This was a great WrestleMania for night one. Like last year's night one was so much fun. I think this year's night one is way better than last year's night one. And that's a lot that's saying a lot. This was just so damn good, bro. This was so damn good. It wasn't bloated. They didn't have too many matches. They it was short, concise, right to the point. And that's it. So, let me know down below. What was y'all favorite match from night one? Did you guys enjoy night one? And what was your least favorite match? What do you rate the show on a scale to one to ten? I want to know all about it. I'm trying to know all about it, man. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K. And hopefully, I can still be your Intercush World Heavyweight Champion after tonight's stream. But I appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.